There is a really big controversy, as I said, going on right now just over in Canada. It's all over a beloved news anchor for Canadian TV network CTV. Now her name, there she is, she's gorgeous. Her name is Lisa Laflemme. She's like, if I could compare her to anybody here in the States, like the Diane Sawyer of Canada. Well, after 35 years, she was recently let go by the network at the age of 58. Her firing happened after she let her hair go gray. Now, officially, the company said it listed, quote unquote, changing viewer habits as part of its decision. However, there are reports that the head of CTV News had asked at a meeting who approved the decision to quote, let Lisa's hair go gray. Like why, who did this? Companies are showing their support for Lisa. Look at this, you guys, that's Wendy's. Yeah, iconic. Instead of like the mascot's red hair, they swapped it out for gray. Now this whole controversy has sparked a lot of conversation about older women facing ageism, which is a lot more common than you might think. In fact, a recent AARP survey found two and three women over 50 say they regularly face ageism. Tori, we don't talk about ageism as much as we talk about other plights going on totally. and not to compare the, you know, one to the other. But do you think that this is a movement that needs to happen? And let's move away from television. Let's just think about our peers, our mothers, our viewers in nine to five jobs, what would you say? I think it, the uh, ageism or the ism is really there. I think people right now still want to have young, fresh faces and they think gray equals old, but just for women, gray for men, is distinguished and experienced. Which Anderson also, Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Jeff Schroeder. <laughs> right. For but, real though. Yeah, but it, I will be honest with you. I'm in a visual medium, but if I started to go gray, I a thousand percent would dye my hair because it exists. It's real. And we talk about sexism. We talk about fatism. We talk about other things. Ageism is looked over and skipped, just like many women of that entire generation. Yeah, I think that's what what the, what the story highlights is every person watching Sphere. As you get older, you, you look at this woman who is as distinguished in, in your career as you can possibly be, and you're fired mid-contract, seemingly just for your hair color. So you're looking like, if that can happen to her, yes. what's going to happen yes, to me? Al, yes. You know, I, she probably has another landing spot because of her notoriety. What about me? I definitely understand that. I think, Lindsay, until we change how we look at age as a society, we won't see the difference because, like Tori was talking about, Jeff and Tom Brokaw, anybody, you, there's a million terms for well, men with gray hairs. I mean, yeah. Dan Rather, they call them, go down the list, they call them silver foxes, but, you know, there's no term for that for women. And once we change that, we'll change everything. What is the term for women, Lindsay? I don't know. I, I actually love when women get aged and have gray hair. I think it's beautiful, but I'm, you know, on an island with that idea. Actually not. I think society is moving forward with that idea. Mae Musk was on the cover of Sports yes. Illustrated in a bathing suit with her gray hair looking beautiful. So I think it's just like these older executives that make some decisions that are on the back burner and not understanding and reading the room. Because I think um, specifically with women's hair, there's two conversations. Like, so you go into her job and aesthetics is part of the job. You can't deny that and we can't sit here on this panel and act like aesthetics is not a part of a TV job. However, this is a woman who reported for 35 years, who covered the Iraq war, who's done so many different things, most recently uncovered a lot of stuff in Canada um, that really takes investigative reporting with her entire team. Right. And she's been notable for all these things. And a business decision was made because of her age only, is what she's saying. And so, you know, even though it's gonna be hard for her an uphill battle to prove, this is why a lot of people feel like they must be silenced because they might not work again, just for um, just stating how they feel and their arguments or grievances within the workplace and so I think she really should go out there and do these interviews on CNN and speak her piece because she is by all means qualified young enough yep. and really good at her job and should continue doing it. It's a whistleblow. If, right and if she's the one to Al's point and to your point Lindsay who has so much accolade and she's dealing with it. Can you imagine someone who's a teacher? Totally. Or a waitress. Right, right, I mean, right. how often, you know, I used to work as a waitress in Los Angeles, and I remember, like, at 25, you felt that you were expired. So we have a lot of work to do. Yes, uh, definitely there's been, I, I would say, progress for sure. But I think this is a movement that now more than ever, we need to kind of reframe that whole stigma of gray hair in the workplace. Absolutely. But there is more to the conversation because a lot of women who are over 50, they find themselves in another big bind, especially if they're looking for work. A lot of employers find these women too old 
to hire. But then they will also say that they're too young to retire. So they're stuck being left out of the workforce just because of their age. So what are women in this age group supposed to do? Tori, here we go again. Like, yeah. What are they supposed to do? I know I talked to, I'm going to leave the person's name out of this conversation, but a lot of districts, school districts right now, are hiring a lot of these young teachers coming in simply because they're cheaper. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So what wow. is that, how does that feel for some of the older teachers when they're being replaced by younger teachers? because of the paycheck or the pay cut I right or say. the pay cut I, I what's so interesting to me and you brought this up so I want to jump to you on this is what a loss we're missing such a great group of people in the workforce they're usually mothers or grandmothers they know how to run a household they know how to manage a pocketbook they know how to keep control they know how to multitask they're educated they have expertise all these things what a loss and then it's an enormous group that do, that is a vacuum so right but from that loss there can be a net gain and what I say when I mean by that is you know people have different feelings about capitalism yeah. but it is the structure that we live under and the one good thing that capitalism provides for us is there always is going to be a company that's looking for a gap in the market and if there are women with gray hair or anybody with gray hair that's being discriminated against that's just going to create a huge pool of talented people for you to hire for your company and overtake the other we saw this with Victoria's Secret they came out we're unapologetic we're not putting you big girls in our undergarments so uh, we get out of here and what happened a bunch of companies were like we'll put you in our undergarments and they realized what the average shape of an average human being looks like and those companies surpassed Victoria's Secret who I believe filed for bankruptcy at one yes, point. Yes they sure so did. They plunged they like a v-neck bra. <laughs> right, right so <laughs> capitalism does take care of a lot. And there's some like irreplaceable strategies ideas personalities that someone who has a little bit more wisdom and experience right. can bring to the workplace right. or any place and so you know when you think about you know I thought I knew it all at 25 but I would have loved to hire 34 year old Lindsay as opposed to 25 right. year old Lindsay I was, and I would I'm sure 50 year old Lindsay will be even better and so that's why I think people need to embrace not just bringing in the young kids out of college yes we should support them but to do every job where you have to be experienced and really understand it just for a pay cut will ultimately I think denigrate the business yeah, you get what you pay because, for yeah, you're yeah gonna, you gonna, you no for. one's gonna understand how to work with people in these settings and just some life skills that you learn along the way about how to better navigate situations and we always talk about representation matters. A lot of those viewers, now I'm going back to this television show, a lot of those viewers see themselves in her. Totally. They know That's her. That's the really strange thing I about know. this. Their, their demo, I would stigma. think. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And how, how about yeah. the stigma of who let Lisa's hair go that way? Not did Lisa choose her own hair right. to go a certain way? I mean, the agency has even gone in that question. Right. I know.